Welcome to the bullpen. It's our monthly conversation about the markets featuring Tommy Grisapi from Advanced Trading, of course, based at Mayville, North Dakota. Tommy, as always, we appreciate the, the chance to connect and, and talk about this wonderful world of markets. Don, great to be here. I am in Mayville today, and I tell you what, it's uh, Friday, April Fool's Day, buddy. Uh, these bags under my eyes are real, and I'm ready for some rest, and we're going to reload, and we're going to trade markets again on Sunday night. We, uh, we have entered into a whole new realm of uh, a world that none of us, even older, older guys and gals, have never experienced. So the drought last year in North Dakota, great market demand. We don't have a conflict. We have a full-blown war going on over there in Ukraine. Who's on Russia's side? Who's on our side? Who's NATO? I'm learning more per day. I Google so many new things per day. <laughs> Crimea, uh, I, I learn new things every day. Swift loans. So with all that, we have incredible market volatility, my friend. Well, of course, we ended the month with a bang with the USDA reports, prospective plantings, uh, stocks. What, what did you see in those reports? Uh, I think a, a few surprises there. Yeah, the economics of what fertilizer costs really played into that. Uh, clients have been telling me in North Dakota for months that it would be ABC, anything but corn. Not to say they're not planting corn, but if you didn't prepay and have your ducks in a row, not everyone up here is set up to grow corn, especially $7 corn with uh, high input. So it's an expensive crop. You had to have your ducks in order. You had to have the fertilizer bought. So we lost a couple million acres of corn. We picked up a couple million acres of beans. United States government on the stocks number told us we have extra, we have extra crop, we have extra, uh, little extra corn and beans, but boy, the market's really reflecting that in the spreads. So the overall effect of the uh, market, uh, not only at the end of the month and of March, but the beginning of April, is that they're selling the front months and buying the back months. We call that bear spreading in our industry. And you could see that. Something interesting happened today. I know it's a month end review, but we'll jump right to April 1st. Everyone out there watching and listening, take a look at December 22 corn up on the day, 23 corn up on the day, Dece 24 up on the day, Dece 25 corn up on the day big. Looks like the world's really reacting to that uh, this fertilizer issue, shortage, supply, cost of fertilizer. Looks like this may not be going away anytime soon, or someone decided the whole back end of corn was very uh, much on sale and they came buying it today, my friend. Gosh, how many people are looking at 24, 25 right now? Well, let me give you, you're laughing, I'm laughing. Uh, December 25 traded 25 contracts today, but it really was up 15 cents. I offered it up for 20, I didn't get any. That's crazy. You talked about North Dakota. I just want to swing back to that if I can. Uh, corn acres in Minnesota, I'm sorry, in North Dakota projected to be down 12%, seemed like a bunch, but then I started looking at the specialty crop numbers, and you've been talking about this uh, all winter long, canola looking at record acreage, barley up 28%, confections up 85%, crazy, uh, flax 32% higher, but the only specialty crop that went down was dry beans down 2% in North Dakota, so uh, like you said, uh, ABC right there in the state of North Dakota. Anything but corn. And, and, and to our friends in the South in Texas, cotton, look at a cotton chart. If you don't have real-time quotes, go to barchart.com, hit in the word cotton. We had $140 cotton the other day, Don. I mean, these prices, farmers used to get excited when it would get to 95 or 100. There's other choices out there. And folks are having to pivot. I did talk to a couple of clients today. They're trying to maneuver to get another quarter planted the corn. But if you want to have a real big swing in the June report to go back to 91 million acres of corn and maybe 91 million of uh, beans or swing it you know, one way or the other, it, it's not so much that farmers don't think that growing corn is profitable. It's really getting the ducks in a row to do it. We're, oh, we're two weeks away from planting wheat. They're planting a little wheat out west, but the Red River Valley will get going here. It's go time. You have to have your stuff ordered. Uh, it's going to be hard to switch things at this point, my friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious with all this volatility, all the, the stuff that's happening uh, in the geopolitical world, what's the investment community doing? Are, are they paying any attention to commodities right now? Uh, they are, but I just had a discussion with this from a, a, with a friend of ours. And I said, we talk about commodities all day, all night, but 
you you have someone else from a, a different news agency, maybe a national news agency without mentioning names. They start ask, asking questions about commodities and carry out and corn and fertilizer. It's amazing what they don't know. If you ask them about Facebook, Google, Twitter, uh, Tesla's earnings, how many cars they made, they'd tell you everything about it. Commodities are a specialty item when it comes to trading. And there's so much in play, Don, because inflation, inflation isn't going to go up. Inflation has went up. We don't have a little bit of inflation. We're on the verge of hyperinflation in certain sectors of the economy. Now, that sounds dramatic, and maybe we'll have hyperinflation for three months or six months. The Federal Reserve's uh, ramping up the uh, interest rates, and some of this inflation, as we all know, is from the COVID hangover, and now you throw Ukraine and Russia into that. Where there's just sometimes it's hard to get parts for certain items. It's hard to get certain chemicals maybe out of China. It's hard to, oh, I was going to have some uh, tile and installed at home or uh, flooring they couldn't get the glue for it and so they had the the flooring they didn't have the glue just strange things like that are happening all across the world so some of these items that are inflated are uh, due to supply chain issues but uh, wages are going up too at an alarming rate and those wages are trying to keep up with this inflation so if someone's going to hire someone and think they're going to pay them what they paid them two years ago they're probably not going to get that person because another business that's competing with their business will, will pay a higher wage if they do need that labor and talent, my friend. So there's inflation from labor, there's inflation from the raw product, that's the commodity question you asked, and there's overall people are looking to make money. And so when you ask, is Wall Street watching this? Yeah, but they don't really understand what we do that much. That's my own opinion. So we're going to need the, those dollars when we try to fill up the truck at the pump uh, right now. The gas prices have been uh, going sky high. The president trying to intervene, uh, releasing uh, some strategic petroleum reserves for the next six months. Uh, what's that uh, do to the ag markets or does it? Well, it, it concerns me because when governments get involved in markets, you should let the markets trade. You should let the supply and demand function. Uh, when I hear presidential comments that oil companies are making too much money, I'll tell you someone else who's starting to make too much money uh, without mentioning names, but they happen to grow corn, wheat, and beans. So if the farmer becomes a villain, like the oil companies do, it scares me. When the government gets involved in the price of crude oil, what's to stop them from getting involved in the price of corn or wheat or beans? What's, what's to stop the embargo word, embargo word? So I don't like governments involved in markets let markets function, let people make and lose money, let them pay taxes, let the function happen. So when pe people like speculators speculate and say, hey, supply's down, demand's up, I wanna buy oil futures. And then when they get walloped on an overnight comment, crude oil's down $12 because the president uh, decided that due to their green energy policy or battery policy, yesterday, I'm not picking on them, but it's easy to do. The president said, if we all just bought electronic vehicles, we could save $80 a month. Well, most battery operated cars are $50,000, $60,000, not to mention you might borrow money to buy that vehicle. We're, you know, he has, he has a secret service driving around. Sometimes the folks in Washington, D.C. are a little disconnected with what's happening here in Main Street in Portland, North Dakota. I just had a burger at the PLS. I'm sure you've been there a few times yourself or here at First State Bank in Mayville. So the bid and ask between the disconnect between what's happening uh, in Washington, what's happening here in Main Street's gotten a little uh, off and, and headlines come out. But I tell you one interesting thing that I know the president and Congress and Senate doesn't have. They don't have a strategic fertilizer reserve. And that, my friend, is why corn was up in 22, 23, 24, and 25. You can BS some of the people some of the time, but you need fertilizer to grow crops and Russia and other countries control an incredible amount of that fertilizer. And uh, there's just not enough to go around. Russia said today, I quote, we're going to trade with people who are friendly to us. Well, we needed some of those products and we no longer have access to them, which means again, the function of the market's going to work, supply and demand. So this story isn't going to go away. It's gonna be a dynamic few years, my friend. 
we flip to the calendar to April, new month, new quarter, anything, uh, any final thoughts as we move into this, uh, this next month here, Tommy? Well, rest up. It's going to be an active spring and summer. I hope the weather, I hope mother, Co mother nature cooperates. If she's in a bad mood and throws Canada, North Dakota, Montana, Western States, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas into a drought, boy, we could have some really high prices. And although high prices feel fun in the beginning, it sends a signal to the world to get into our business. So my warning is to the American farmer, the North Dakota farmer, the Minnesota farmer, get ready. The whole world's making a lot of money growing corn, wheat, and beans, and other crops. And my heart goes out to the rancher, someone who raises cattle, hogs, chickens, yeah. these inputs to raise these uh, animals. It's something you're going to have to keep an eye on. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Tommy, hopefully you get some rest and uh, get geared up for next week because it's going to be a wild ride. Thanks, my friend. Again, thank you for joining us for our monthly update on the market news with Tommy Grisanti from Advanced Trading based in Mayville, North Dakota. That's the bullpen. I'm Don Wick on the Red River Farm Network.